Um, I'll try to be as short as possible to leave room for discussions. The subject today uh, speaks about um, identity versus diversity, European identity versus European diversity. And if we would have even less time than we have, I would uh, answer this question simply by saying we need um, more European identity without losing our European diversity, which is a strength and not uh, an encumberment to uh, working together even more. Now, this is a bit uh, trivial to say this, and the question is, of course, how do you do it? And now I have the choice of taking two avenues in the four minutes which I have left. One is to um, embark on soul searching. We can talk about identity crisis, we can talk about the crisis of democracies in our societies, we can talk about populism from left and right. I think this is important. Uh, it has its place and its necessity, but I will not do that. I will concentrate on what we can actually do, how we can act, for two reasons. Number one, because I represent a government, and government is less about soul-searching and should be more about palpable action. And number two, also because um, I feel that there lies the true answer, and I'll come to that at the end of the four minutes. Now, we need to do something. And speaking of my own country, I can tell you that we are convinced that there is a strong popular appetite, even more an expectation, that Europe should act strongly and decisively. Now, where should it do so? It should do so on the big issues. There it should be strong and less on the smaller issues. Now, given the shortage of time, let me just sketch out three of these big issues where I see popular demand for a strong Europe. Number one is uh, strengthening Europe internally. And here, um, I believe this is about doing more on the social dimension of Europe and doing more on the economic dimension of Europe. And uh, two panels ago, eminent uh, participants talked about the need and the possibility of strengthening the Eurozone area, that I would also include in this dimension. Priority number two, defending and further developing Europe's role as a foreign policy actor. There too, I feel that this is what European citizens, at least in Germany, expect from the European Union to do. And this does not only include having a joint approach to countries like China, this also has to do with defending our borders, having a harmonized migration policy. This also means, and particularly today this also means that, is finding a strong European answer to attempts to start a trade conflict on aluminium uh, and on other metal products. This is something I think a moment where we realize that only as Europe can we stand up to such an attack on free trade. And the third priority, which a bit has to do with the last point I made, is um, bringing our European position to bear on how the world order should be. The world order as we know it is under threat. We have... Uh, Unilateralism, authoritarianism, transactionalism, these are the forces which are today threatening the world order which we Europeans are looking for, rule-based, multilateral, and only together will we be able to prevail. So there too, I think there is a popular demand for, for having a strong Europe. Now, I am convinced that if we not only talk about is wrong, what is wrong with Europe, but if we act on these three priorities, popular support of Europe will grow, popular nationalism can be contained, because Europe shows that it acts and helps the citizens where they feel they need them, it. And thirdly, I think this is the only way for us to prevail 
on our strategic priorities in this world which is becoming more chaotic and more dangerous for us Europeans.